Hezekiah. Amen. Praise the Lord, somebody. I said, praise the Lord, somebody. Amen. Amen. If you would find your way with me to 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter. 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter, beginning at the 17th verse. I'm going to ask those who are able to stand to honor the reading of God's holy word. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. And it reads on this wise. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not in putting their trespasses unto them and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. Let us pray. God of grace and God of mercy, he who is able to do all, see all, and is all, we come to you right now, God, as we've arrived at this preaching and teaching moment and ask right now, God, that you would have your way in the midst of us today. God, I ask that you would hide me behind Calvary's rugged cross and send a word, God, for your people, a renewing word, a refreshing word, a word of restoration, a word of deliverance, a word that will disciple your people. And God, open their hearts that they might receive that same word, not from a man, but from you. In Jesus' name we do pray, and all of God's people said amen. 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 On last Sunday, I uh, spoke with you for a little while from the subject, a season of renewal. And as I said to you then, I was going to continue in that same sense today as on last Sunday, talk particularly with you about the necessity of renewal and understanding and knowing when it was time for renewal, revival, time to regenerate yourself back unto God. And talk specifically from the matter of understanding that what we so often consider to be revivals in our traditional concepts are not what God considers to be revival. Because what God would consider to be true revival is in the transformation and restoration of the heart, mind, body, and soul of his people. And so I used on last Sunday as an illustration looking at the process of repotting a plant. And that the plant will describe to us and will tell us when it is necessary for the plant to begin the process of being repotted, which for it helps to renew and regenerate itself. And so I want to continue today, but uh, as we talked last Sunday on understanding and knowing when, I want to talk today more so from the process of once you began the process of revival and renewal, what happens? For it's one thing that we must all understand and know is that we all, at some point in time, need to be revived and renewed. Every once in a while, we all come to a season in life where we all need to be revived and renewed. That everything, the picture and the joy that we had at one moment is not there as it was before. And as I read for you on last Sunday coming from the 51st Psalm in which we heard there the restoration of the joy of our salvation is the moment in which we truly understand and know is that when our joy has been revived, the joy of our salvation has been restored, we are on the right track 
to real renewal and restoration. And so as we look at what is necessary to happen when we start actually going through a revival and a renewal, that there are some things that happen after we have been told and understand that it is necessary, after we see that the leaves have become withered and after we see that the soil has become dry, what then do we do? What happens after we see what needs to be done? And the bad thing about it is, is oftentimes many of us recognize that something needs to be done, but we're always waiting on somebody else to do it. Amen. We recognize that something needs to happen and we wait on somebody else to do it. Even when it includes ourselves. We're waiting on somebody else to save us, waiting on somebody else to deliver us when, in fact, we have the opportunity in the palm of our hands to begin the process. My mother, when we were younger, she would sweep up the trash. Then she'd leave the trash and the pan there, sitting right there. And I walk past it. And I'd go doing what I need to do, and I'd walk past it again. And then she'd say to me, why didn't you put the trash in the pan? Well, I wanted to tell her, you the one that sweeped it up, so I figured that you would have finished the job. But what she was trying to let me know is that sometimes you just need to do what needs to be done. There's no need waiting on anybody else to do it, but when you see that something needs to be done, it is time to do it. Time is out for looking at everything and talking about all oh, what's wrong with the picture and what's going on in the picture. But it's time for folk to look and see that it's time for revival and begin the process of renewing and stop waiting on somebody else to do it. But God is calling his people to start the process. And so when we began that process and see what needs to happen in order for revival and renewal to happen, not just in our own lives, but in those things that we come in contact with to see true revival all around us, revival in the midst of our lives and revival on our jobs and even a mighty revival in the church, it means that there are some things that have to happen. And continuing on the use of understanding what happens when you repot and replant uh, that plant. What happens after you have recognized that it's necessary to repot the plant. You have to begin to extricate the plant from where it currently is. Meaning that you have to get the plant out of the current pot. Yeah. Yeah. Say that one more time. You got to remove the plant out of its current pot. Because one or two things have happened. Either the pot that it was currently in is not large enough for the roots that are in it in order for the roots to spread out as they need to spread out. The pot has become a prison for the plant's development and growth. And what happens sometimes for us is that we allow our state where we are to become a prison of our development and our growth. We reach a state in life and we reach a plateau and we begin to get comfortable, but then we allow our roots to become hardened and we are imprisoned by where we are. And we no longer reach higher. We no longer reach out anymore because we allow ourselves to be directed by our current confines. That is no different than the church. The church allows itself to become imprisoned by the walls of the church. Allows itself to become imprisoned by traditionality and institutionalism. But God has not called the church to tradition or institutionalism, but has called the church to deliver the lost and to let them know that God is still alive. And so in order to do what God has called 
us to do, uh, the plant must be removed from the current pot. In order to remove the plant from the pot, anybody that's ever done that before knows that you have to loosen the soil on the outside. You have to begin to loosen up some things that have been hard, some stuff that have been in place for a long time. You have to go and open some doors that some folk had locked up and blocked and put the bookshelf in front of and thought all oh, nobody had remembered anymore. But in order to remove the plant from the pot, you have to begin to break up what has become hardened. Yeah, yeah. You have to loosen the soil. Depending upon the size of the pot, you can pick up the pot and some will turn it upside down in order to seek free the plant that is on the inside. And when you're seeking free the plant on the inside, some might think that you are damaging the flower or that you are destroying the flower itself. But understanding that in order for it to be put in a new pot, it has to be shaken free of the old pot. It has to be released from the old pot. It has to be released from the old mindset. It has to be released from the old place. It has to be released from the old things. It has to be let go of what had confounded it into its current condition. And sometimes that is a painful experience. Sometimes it, it, it is a, 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 an experience in which some are left feeling all alone. Some are left feeling as outcasts and swept under the rug. But if you would pay attention to what God is trying to do, you would recognize that the shaking free is trying to put you in a better place. Uh, but some of us have gotten so used to our current situations that we are not looking at where God is trying to take us, but we're just still celebrating all of the past. Stuff. But I read somewhere in his word that he said, your latter shall be greater than your former days. So if God has been good to me up until this very moment, if God has taken care of me up until this very moment, if he has blessed me and sustained me up until this very moment, and he's saying to me right now, I need to shake you free of where you are because I got something greater in store for me. I, I may have to wince and cry while the shaking is happening, but I'm not focusing on the shaking free, but I'm looking to God and saying, I know you're taking me to another pot that will be able to sustain the next phase of my life. That the next pot that I'm going to will be able to be able to allow my roots to flow a little bit longer and a little bit deeper. The, the next pot that I'm going to is, is going to be a place where I can rest a little bit easier because in the next place is where my growth can happen because I've been bound by where I am and I've been seeking for something different but I now understand that I can't get what it is that you're trying to give me where I am. So I must allow you to Shake me free from where I am. And then once you have taken the plant out of the pot, some say that you are to look at the roots on the flower and on the pot. And by examining the roots that are there, that if the roots on the outside have become hardened, and have dried up that you are to cut off the dead roots that you are to cut off the roots that have become dry that you are to cut off the roots that are not allowing for the plant to grow anymore in other words the stuff that has dried up in your life when God is trying to replant you you got to cut off the dead stuff. You got to cut off the things that have not been able to nurture you, that have not been giving you the nutrients that you need. In the repotting process, you got to cut the roots off. 
off. The roots that, that, that have dried up over time because they were unable to adjust to the current condition and circumstance, you got to cut them off. And sometimes you, you may be a little afraid to cut off the roots because you're, you're, you're looking and understanding that these roots been around for a long time, that, that these roots have been in the same place for a while, but you're calling me to cut off the root, and it's not about the root, but it's about the next phase of the root. See, we get caught up in looking at where it is right now, and God is saying that if you keep on looking where it is, but don't envision where I'm taking you you'll never be able to grow and develop and so it's necessary for you to cut off the dead roots it's necessary for you to cut off the dead roots because once the dead roots have been cut off you lose what is left to be able to, to pull up the nutrients once it gets placed in the new pot see you can't take old roots to new pots. You, you can't take dead, dried up roots to new pots. You can change the soil all you want to. You can clean out the pot all you want to, but if you place that same plant into a new pot with new soil and you have not cut off the dead roots, the plant won't grow because the roots are not able to pull in the new that are necessary for the plant to continue to grow and to develop. So some of us like to take the, the, the short way out and we'll try to pull the plant up and place it into a new pot and make it look like we've repotted and we've revived and we've renewed. But the evidence will show you that as you water the plant that has been repotted but the roots have not been see as much as you water and feed the plant that the plant won't grow and the plant won't produce the plant won't revive and renew because you didn't cut off the dead roots dead roots can symbolize a lot of stuff dead roots can symbolize a lot of things in your life some things that you recognize that it was dead, but you kept on stepping over it. You recognize that it wasn't giving you any more nutrients, but you kept on walking by it. You recognize that it wasn't doing what it used to do, but you kept on leaving it where it was, and then you started to wonder why stuff started slowing down. And then you'll come to realize that you can no longer walk over the dead roots, that you can no longer pass the dead roots by, but you have to pull out the blade and begin the process of cutting off the dried up roots so that it may produce what is necessary. Now don't get me wrong if you get too happy with the blade. If you get too happy with the blade and you cut too deep, you could potentially cut off the good roots. You don't want to damage the good roots in the process of cutting off the dead roots. So it's necessary that you are in tune to what God is saying to you and that you're not working out of your own mindset and out of your own will, but that you're working off of what God has sent you and shown you that these are the things that have died in your life. And if you are to grow where I need you to grow, then you got to cut off the dead roots. And after you cut off the dead roots, and you began to shake off some of the old soil that existed there. It says that you want to disturb the remaining dirt. Meaning that you got to loosen up the dirt after you've cut off the dead roots. You loosen up and disturb the remaining dirt and root systems. That is a place where we might have been able to walk through 
shaken free. You might even been able to deal with cutting off the dead root. But now you want me to disturb what has been left. You want me to disturb what has existed for so long. You want me to disrupt what I've always done. You want me to disrupt how it has always been. You want me to disrupt and disturb a system that has been in place all my life. And you want me to disturb the system. Well, it is only by disturbing the system that is left over that by repotting the plant that it will be in the best position to take in the new pot and the new soil. Claudette Copeland put it this way. She used an illustration of a woman late at night driving her car she just left from getting something to eat as a restaurant by herself. And as she pulled out of the driveway, she looked in her rearview mirror and she saw a tractor trailer driving behind her. And she didn't pay it any attention, but as she continued down the road a few miles, and she saw cars turning off. She never saw the tractor trailer put on the signal light. And so she slowed down and saw that the tra tractor trailer slowed down too. When she sped up, she saw the tractor trailer was speeding up behind her as well. And so by this time, she was getting a little frantic and, and not knowing what was happening and thinking that the driver of the tractor trailer was following her. And so she made a quick right off of the main road and the tractor trailer made a right right behind her. And she made another left and came back around and circled back to the main road and saw that the tractor trailer did the same thing. And so she raced down the road up the hills and round the corners until finally she got to the 7-Eleven. And she raced into the 7-Eleven and pulled her car in to the 7-Eleven. And as she was sitting there in the 7-Eleven, after she'd gotten out of the car and ran into the store, the tractor trailer pulled up behind her. She was inside yelling and screaming to the attendants that somebody was behind her. But the driver of the tractor trailer came down out of the cockpit of the trailer and pulled behind the car and opened up the back door of her car and pulled out a man that had been in the back seat of the car. And she went inside of the store and said to her, I wasn't following you to hurt you, but I was following you because while you were at the, at the restaurant, I was sitting in my trailer and from my viewpoint, I could see that somebody has gotten into the back seat of your car and that they didn't mean to do you any good. So I wanted to follow you to make sure that nothing happened to you and at the soonest point that I could help you I wanted to help you to pull out what was in your back seat uh, just like the man who was in the cockpit of the truck God is following behind us from a different vantage point and is walking with us and he can see that there are some things underneath of us some stuff in our roots, some stuff in our soils that he's trying to let us know that you got to shake free and cut off and disturb if you are to go where I want you to go and be what I want you to be. You got to deal with the stuff that's underneath of the soil. You have to deal with the things that are in your root system and, and sometimes it may feel like you're a little afraid or a little scared of the process but you got to have faith in a God that will keep you and will sustain you and at the end of the day he's following behind you so that you won't have any harm to come up until you so that he can see what's happening in your
your life. And at the end of the day, if you allow God to go into your back seat, if you allow God to get down in your in your dirt and in your roots, if you allow God to get down in the midst of your systems and your root systems and allow God to disturb what has been there, uh, that is the process of when you began to see a real revival and a real renewal, when you let God get down on the inside, when you let God get into the middle of it, when you let God get into the midst of it, when you let God shake the foundations of where you are, that is when you begin to see some stuff renewing and restoring in your life. When you let God on the inside. When you let him disturb what has existed for so long. When you let him shake away the old dirt. And when you're not afraid to let him follow you on your journey. Because as long as I know God is with me. As long as I can feel his presence. As long as I can be in his glory. It may be difficult. It may be hard. But because I know he's there. I can surrender to him. Because I know he's in the midst. So God is calling us in this season of renewal and revival. Is to let go of ourselves. And let God in in the midst. And only then will we be able to experience a true revival, a true renewal, and a real restoration. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. There may be one today that has been traveling this road. You've been afraid of the car that's been driving behind you. I came to let you know, don't be afraid of that car that you see in your rearview mirror. Yeah. Yeah. 